Islam is obsessed with power and control. Two of the groups Islam is most obsessed with controlling are women and non-Muslims. Women are controlled through manipulation, harassment, threats, beatings, acid attacks, and honor killings. Non-Muslims are controlled through insults, abuse, oppression, persecution, and terrorist attacks. A significant portion of the world's population, of course, fits into both categories. What happens when someone is both a woman and a non-Muslim and is targeted by the religion of peace? We don't need to wonder, because the impact that Muhammad's teachings have on non-Muslim women and girls has been seen for nearly 14 centuries. Kidnappings, rapes, forced conversions, and murders. The Times of India reports, Gurugram, a BCom final year student, was shot in the head from point-blank range by an alleged stalker outside her college in Faridabad on Monday afternoon. The shooting of the girl, who died on the spot, triggered protests in the NCR city and a political row in Haryana after CCTV footage showed the shooter to be a cousin of Congress's new MLA Aftab Ahmed. The footage of the girl being shot in the head in the name of Allah is available on YouTube and on many other sites. I'm not going to play it here. The main accused, identified as Tosif, the MLA's cousin, and Rayan were arrested from Nu on Tuesday and remanded in police custody for two days. The victim, 20-year-old Nikita Tomar and Tosif, had known each other since they were children. They went to the same school. In September, however, Nikita had filed a molestation complaint against Tosif. Nikita had gone to appear for an exam at Agarwal College in Balabgar, area of Faridabad, at 1 p.m. on Monday. A chilling 23-second video, taken from footage of around 4 p.m., captures Nikita and one of her friends coming out of the college, Tosif and Rayan arriving in a white car and trying to drag her inside the vehicle, Nikita managing to free herself from his grip, and Tosif pulling out a pistol from his pocket and shooting her. Nikita's friend, who was with her at the time, told Times of India that she was in shock and feared for her own safety. We were waiting for an auto when the car stopped, and two people stepped out. Before we could understand what was happening, they tried to drag Nikita in. It all happened in a matter of a few seconds before anyone could even react. The woman's family members and others blocked the Faridabad Matura Road on Tuesday morning in protest. As police appealed for calm, Haryana Home Minister Anil Vij announced the setting up of a special investigation team led by ACP crime Anil Kumar, to ensure quick investigation and a time-bound trial. Nikita's father, Mool Chand Tomer, alleged Tosif had been harassing her for several months now, and she had filed a molestation complaint against him in September. He had been persistently calling her up for the past few weeks and pressuring her to convert to Islam and marry him, but she had refused, Tomer said. Other family members told Times of India that even Tosif's mother, had called up Nikita several times to ask her to convert. There's a reason for that, by the way. According to the Quran, Muslim men can marry Jewish women and Christian women. Muslim women can't marry Jewish or Christian men, but Muslim men can marry Jewish and Christian women. Muslim men can't marry Hindu women. So Nikita would have needed to convert to Islam for Tosif to marry her. Tosif and Nikita studied in the same school in Faridabad and were batchmates. Nikita, her family members said, was among the school toppers in the class 12 boards and was preparing for the civil services exams. In 2018, after they completed school, the two went to different colleges, with Nikita taking up commerce and Tosif pursuing a physiotherapy course. According to police, that same year, Tosif had allegedly abducted Nikita. A case had been registered back then, but was withdrawn by Nikita's family later after a panchayat was held, police sources said. Nikita's family members alleged they had been pressured to do so by Tosif's relatives, who wield considerable political influence in Nu, and that Nikita's family had been assured Tosif would not trouble her anymore. On the molestation complaint and the family's allegations, Faridabad Police Commissioner O.P. Singh said they were looking into the matter. Now, some of you may be wondering what this story really has to do with Islam. 
After all, couldn't a Christian man or a Jewish man or a Hindu man or an atheist man become obsessed with a woman and, in a fit of rage, kill her? Of course, men can become obsessed with women. Women can become obsessed with men. In some cases, obsession leads to violence. So, is Islam free from blame here? Not at all. If you follow the news coming out of India or Pakistan or the Middle East or Northern Africa, you know that this sort of violence towards women is oddly common in the Muslim world. Why is that? Well, there is a general problem among human beings that we often have a desire to control people that we have no business controlling. We strive for power over others. Most religions and various philosophies include teachings that are meant to moderate and soften and constrain our desire to control other people. Islam does the exact opposite. Islam amplifies the desire to control other people. Islam says, hey, I know you want to control women. I know you want to control other people. And guess what? God wants you to control women. God wants you to control other people. God wants you to control the entire world. So go out there and subjugate the entire world. Force the entire world to obey the teachings of an illiterate 7th century Arabian caravan robber. The result is that when a young Muslim like Tosif tells a young woman like Nikita to convert to Islam and be his wife so he can completely control everything she says and does for the rest of her life. And she says no? He can't take no for an answer. He has to have complete control over her life, even if that means ending her life. Rape gangs in the UK, mass kidnappings in Northern Africa, sex slavery in the Middle East, forced conversions in Pakistan, girls being murdered in broad daylight in India. There's a pattern here. And that pattern can be traced directly back to Muhammad. That's why we will never stop exposing him until he is known worldwide as the greatest laughingstock and the most obvious false prophet in history.